Sons of heaven strove ag upon the great sea. And I know some people might be like, what does the sea represent? Mm -hmm. So we go to Revelation chapter 7 for that. Uh, and we're and we trying to find out the sea. Yeah. What does the sea represent? Go now, on. sea. Step by step. Yeah, step by step. You see, see, Daniel, Daniel is, is in his night visions now. And Daniel is sleeping and, 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 and God gave him visions. And, and Daniel sees a sea. And it's like a, a gusty winds, according to verse 2. Known winds and, and the winds beating upon the sea. So what does the sea represent? Um, Revelation chapter 17 and verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sit, where the horse sitteth, mm -hmm. and peoples and multitudes are. and nations and tongues. Are peoples, multitudes, nations. So what does he represent? Peoples, peoples. multitudes, nations, kindreds and tongues. Amen, amen. But basically people. <laughs> uh-huh. So what does the wind represent? Revelation 7 verse 1. 7 verse 1 to what? To 3. To 3. Okay. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, mm -hmm. nor on the sea, nor on any tree. That's it? And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seed of the living God, and cried, <laughs> and cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Anyone want to explain that? What does the, according to the verse, First, what does the wind represent? Um, destruction. So like, like destruction. Like, like God's wrath. God's wrath. Like, okay. like commotion. Commotion. Yeah. These big words y'all using. <laughs> Give me a baby word. Start with S. <laughs> strife. <laughs> strife. Someone said strife. Okay, that could work. Um, another baby word. It start with R. It start with W. War. War, uh-huh. Now, how do we know according to that? It says, according in, in verse, in chapter 7, right, it says, four angels. You saw four angels on, on, on the four corners of the earth. And these angels are holding back something. If they release it, what would happen to the earth? Be destroyed. It will be destroyed. So that, that means these winds has something to, has something in it to what? To what? Dis cause dis destruction, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So, um, um. Those are the winds of, and what is it now? It says, saying, hurt not the earth, neither. Why does the angel don't, why didn't the angel hurt the earth with those winds? Because God's people still were on the earth. Ah, these winds, or the or wind inside the Bible, usually represent um, commotion, war, strife. So, when, when, when Daniel saw the, the waters, and he saw gusty winds, and, and, and the winds just, moving upon this water. All the saying is that there is commotion, there is there is destruction, there is strife, there is war among the people. And these wars produce something. And we see it in Daniel chapter seven. What do these wars or what, what do, do do these things produce? What do wars produce? Daniel chapter seven verse says four. Daniel chapter seven Verse 4. Let's read verse 3. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one another. Ah, so what does, do, 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 does this war, what does the war among the people produce? These beasts. Now, the Bible says the beasts are upon the sea. This gusty sea, you have beasts upon it. So these beasts gotta be violent, they gotta be dangerous. Because these beasts are upon gusty winds. In other words, to put it in reality, what does the beast represent? Daniel chapter 7 and verse 17. What does the, the beast represent? Daniel chapter 7 verse 17. These great beasts which are four 
are four kings which shall arise which shall arise out of the earth. Let's turn to Daniel chapter seven verse twenty three. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. So if the fourth beast is the fourth kingdom on the earth, that means the first beast is the first what? Kingdom, kingdom on the earth. Mm -hmm. The second kingdom is the second kingdom, kingdom. not on the earth or that ruled the earth yeah. at that particular time. So when we see the first beast, the first beast represents the beast or represents the kingdom that is, gonna, is, is ruling or, or has ruled the world at that period of time. You understand? Or was the first beast that took the whole the dominion over the over the, the then known world. Now, if we read Daniel chapter seven and verses um, verses four, four, let's read. Let's read it. The first was like a lion and eagle's wings. Mm -hmm. I beheld it. I beheld till the till I beheld till the wings there thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth. And made stand upon the, upon from, upon, upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Matthew, you want to explain that? Anyone else want to explain it? Oh, you mean to explain it? Or? Yeah, that's just explain it. Um, well, I mean, I what remember does, something. What does the in Deuteronomy? In but, Deuteronomy chapter, but I can't remember. Twenty-eight verse forty-eight. Oh, yeah. 28 verse 49. Mm -hmm. What does this? We already know that what the beast represents. What does the beast represent? What do the beast represent? Kingdoms. No, yes, the kingdoms. The beast <laughs> represents. <laughs> the beast represents the kingdom, right? So the according to Daniel chapter 7 verse 23, the fourth beast represents the what? Kingdom. The fourth oh, kingdom on earth, yeah. and the first beast represents the first, first kingdom, kingdom that ruled earth. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what was the first kingdom that ruled the then known world? <laughs> you want to say it's so bad? <laughs> Let's turn to the Bible, Daniel chapter twenty-eight, verses forty-nine. And, and 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 it's a wait. This first beast is a lion with what? Eagle eagle's wings. wings. What 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 do the eagles even represent? And what what does the what does the lion? Coming in fast. Come, someone said coming in fast. Yeah. Wow. My God. You didn't even read it there. Let's read it there. Well, I just remember what I was in there. Yeah. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, mm -hmm. from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Mm -hmm. Let's read Daniel chapter 1, verse 1. So God is saying, I'm going to bring to you a nation that is swift. Those eagle swims, wings represents how swift this kingdom is going to be. And how it's a, you can't understand the language. People should remember how Daniel couldn't understand it. So he had to learn Babylonian language. Ah, but you give it away. But then you. <laughs> In the Stop. third year of the reign of, Jeho of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And besieged it. So the nation that brought the Jews into captivity. And the nation, the first nation that was on, that ruled the earth, was Babylon. 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 But why a lion? In other words, why does the Bible say lion? Why can't the Bible just say, you know what? Number one, the, f mm. the um, Babylon could come, then this could come, and then that could come. Be why the Bible had to use? Because its character was like unto a lion. Its character, or in, in other words, its nature is unto a lion. If I say, if I say, my, my lion, when you know when name and I say, but you was a beast, boy, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't say, well, why you, why you say that? He'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, when you say he's a beast, you're saying like he's like unto a beast. So the Bible says that this nation is like a lion with angel's wings. That's just, that's just um, literature on you. Just using the Metaphors. metaphor, yes. direct metaphor. And it's just um, um, doing that because the, so, so that we can search the Bible. The Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. He wants us to search and search and search the Bible so we can get that yeah. exact interpretation. Imagine if the people of this world knew that when the Bible says beast, 
he means kingdom and, and, and they knew the exact order. He was going to try to do all sorts of things to, to, to damage the Bible, to, to um, um, change it up and whatever. Yeah. But because God quoted it, the Bible says in Amos chapter 3 verse 7, that my secrets I reveal to the what? My servants, the prophets. He reveals his secrets to those who are studying the scriptures. And oh, that we, oh, that I may study God's words even more. And so the first beast represents Babylon. Babylon. Mm-hmm. Next verse. Daniel chapter 7, verse 5. Verse 5. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, mm-hmm. and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. So if the first beast is the first kingdom on the earth, what is the second beast? The second, the second, the second kingdom. kingdom that ruled the world. Now, if this second beast got to come, this second beast got to overthrow or got to take over or got to beat up, you know, Babylon. So which mm-hmm. kingdom came after Babylon, mm-hmm. according to the Bible. It will be Middle Persia. Someone said Middle Persia. Bible, Bible. Well, Daniel 5. Uh-huh. Uh, Let's start from 25. Start. Yeah. You start from 25 mm-hmm. to 28 and 31. Let's read it. Now, notice we, notice where we keep on going. To the Daniel. Bible. To the Bible. To the Bible. We ain't, we ain't saying, mm, I think it was England, you know. Or I think it was Mexico. No, no, no. From the Bible, from the Bible. And we can show you right now. Daniel chapter 7 verse 5 verse 25. Oh, and this is the writing that was written. Meany, meany, tackle you far sin. Hmm. This is the interpretation of the thing. Meany, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tackle, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Mm -hmm. Read verse 31. And Darius the Median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old. Okay. To the Medes and Persians. To the Medes and... Anyone anyone want to expand on that particular scripture? You see? Well... Uh Uh-huh. Okay. What's what's the storyline? Basically, um, King Darius came and took over Babylon because, like, this story is when um, this King yeah King Belshazzar was having the party, and then he took out he brought out all the gold and stuff like that because he was just praising himself. So then God took the kingdom away from him, and Daniel had to come and interpret the mini mini part, and then he just showed them how. So where the where, did, where does mini mini? Tackle you fast and come from God's God. handwriting. On Someone the said God's handwriting on what? So, so God literally wrote with His hand on the wall. Wait, I think yeah, it was a hand. I think it was, it was, like, a, it was, it was like a bloodless, bloodless, it was a bloodless hand, hand, huh? Like faint. Yeah. yeah. Uh. So God wrote on the wall the words "many, many tackle you fast," and and no one could understand it. Describe, describe how the king felt. When, when, when he probably afraid, 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 and probably yeah. angry, and probably angry. The, well, actually, uh-huh. he they? wouldn't have really known. He, he didn't know. He didn't on. know. All uh, he knew yeah. was this hand was on the wall. Uh huh. Uh huh. He really think and he's delusional too. And yeah. who came and interpreted? Daniel. 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 And 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 he said, you know what, brother, you know that you ain't supposed to be. One, you know, you know what he did. His probation it's, was closed. Mm-hmm. He took the vessels. You know how they Babylon took over Jerusalem, right? Yeah. He took the vessels from the temple, or the golden cups, and he put wine in it, and he drank it. So that means his saliva was on God's holy cup, that only the priests and stuff supposed to drink. If I'm correct. And in Daniel chapter five. Verse 6, it says, mm-hmm. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, mm-hmm. so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. So he was shaking. So this, yeah. <laughs> he was shaking. 
He was scared. 